Donald Trump will be the first one to tell you he's got a lot of enemies. All of the Democrat politicians, the media bosses, bad people, crooked journalists, the totally dishonest TV pundits, these people are sick. But there's another group of people that consistently catch Trump's ire, comedians, especially late night hosts in NBC's Saturday Night Live. In fact, the president has a habit of threatening to investigate those who make jokes at his expense. Though, if you ask Trump, he's not the problem. They are. There's no talent. He's not, they're not like talented people. I mean, honestly, are these people funny? And I can laugh at myself. And I'm guessing the president wouldn't find my next guest takes very funny either. Like this one by New Yorker cartoonist Roz Chast, a newspaper headline that reads, It's still April Fool. Trump comes clean. Just a joke, folks. Very fitting for this week in particular. And this one from New Yorker staff writer Patricia Marks, a few additions to the dictionary for the Trump era, including Melania Kalia, which is, quote, The misery and despair caused by realizing you shouldn't have signed the prenup. And my favorite. Tweedledee numb, the stupor you feel after being bombarded by so many outrageously dumb tweets, you don't have the energy to be commensurately horrified by any single one. But lately, Chast and Marx have been drawing on another strong personality of a very different nature, Patricia Marx's mother, who is just as quotable as the president, but sadly does not tweet. Her pearls of wisdom are the subject of the New Yorker duo's new book. It's called Why Don't You Write My Eulogy Now? So I can correct it, a mother's suggestions. Roz, Chast, and Patricia Marks, it's great to see you. Thanks so much. Did you think you reached this age and it would still be all about your mothers? Did you think that? I knew it. You did much. know it? Yeah. Why? I guess they're just sort of, uh, my parents are still, they're, they're gone, but there's so much in my head still. You okay with that or do you feel weird? Me too, by the way. I can so relate to this. It is painful. I don't even feel like I have a choice, yeah. really. They're there. So, yeah, They've they're there. They've moved in and they're not moving it's out. It's like, do I want to have two eyes or, you know, <laughs> could I use three or one or four? It's like, well, I have two, you know. Are you as resigned to this too? Well, now I am. But if you had asked me when I was young if this was going to happen, I'd say no because I'm going to choose not to grow up because I just l thought it was such a good deal I had being a child. I was, Roz and I, the first thing we ever collaborated on was a children's book about a little girl who decides to stay in her room for the rest of her life. And one of my favorite, favorite illustrations that Roz ever did is a little girl looking like a little girl with an old lady's bun saying, yes. um, me, age 40. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when, did you, when was that you first collaborated? 1648. Now, when was it really? Yeah. 70s, no, it was really... 80s? It was the I'd 80s. say 80s, 87. Uh, no, before I think. I think maybe 80, oh. 84. Can you work this out and get back to me? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, we, <laughs> we actually collaborated before that because we did that illustration. Yes. Yes. In, in fact, how, sort my of how mother we met. Is how we met. Uh, the first thing I ever um, had published was in the Atlantic Monthly, and oddly enough, it was called. It was a humor piece called "How to Get Along with the Russians." Mm. My, have things changed? And. Um, Ross illustrated it. I didn't know who you Ross know was. No, we were just we starting out. We were in our 20s. Early 20s. And it was a great illustration. And my mother said, that's a great illustration. I think you should call the illustrator, which is the wackiest, stupidest idea in the world. You don't do that. And did you? I did because I do everything I'm told. And I called and, and so... The rest is history. Yes. You yes. know, I, from afar, I've met you before. I haven't met you before, but I'm a big follower. I assume you two are like totally inseparable in real life. Is that true or is that not Pretty true? Great friends. Yeah. You don't yeah. text each other like with emojis or something, do you? That no, kind of I thing. You don't, you don't do emojis. I never understand I think, emojis. I like emojis. You I do? do them so because they're pictures. And I like oh, I know. Yeah, well, they, you're a picture yeah, kind of person. Yeah. Decipher. It's like always like this little thing with maybe a tongue. Yeah, yeah, well, and some of them are very weird. They never relate to what they're trying to express. Some, sometimes, I like the way they sort of end a conversation, though. It's like you can oh, just kind true. of like when you are like are done texting, yes. instead of just kind of like stopping talking, you can kind of wave goodbye. Not yeah. with a bang, but an emoji. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I yeah. picture, again, I don't know you, except know your work. Did you ever see, you ever see Comedians in Cars with Coffee, the Jerry Seinfeld yes, thing? Of course. Did you ever see the episode with Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner? who like in their 80s or 90s every single day have lunch together with little TV tables and they sit there. Is yeah. that, I mean. That would be fun. I've, yeah, see, I've seen yeah. 
I've seen documentaries about that <laughs> dinner. That but you're going to be there, I guess. Sure, uh, I'll be there. I, with I, the I TV hope dinners. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can so, we yeah. actually talk about the book? When you were on the radio today, we asked you about the book. We know more about the book, Marjorie and I, than yeah, you do about you, the book. You've read it. So I just yeah. took some page. I just took a couple of okay. pages out randomly. This one, and you'll see the illustration of what you wrote. This is obviously, again, from Patricia's mother, Janice, right? Is that mm -hmm. her name? Humming is hostile. And then you see the graphic there. Another one, nature, if seen at all, is best seen from a car, which I could not agree with more. But my favorite is actually not about your mother, but about your father. Can I read that? Is that okay with you? Just yes, read a little bit? Do. It's early in the book. It says, when I was a baby, Patricia writes, my father, and here you'll see the graphic from Roz, used to stand over my crib and read the New York Times to me. As soon as I stopped with the baby talk and was capable enough in English, he taught me how to read and then gave me books unsuitable for my age. How old were you when you read The Tin Drum, the story about a three-year-old who decides to stop growing as told by his adult self in a mental asylum? I was eight. This book isn't about my father, though, so let me tell you that while my father was reading to me about the uh, execution of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, I did not know what my mother was doing, neither does she. Is this even close to reality? Well, I was an infant, so, you know, it, it's hearsay, but I, I, I was told that that's how it was, and, and my mother... For the first few years, she can't account for herself. If I say, "What were you doing?" She goes, "I don't know. I don't. I don't know." And if I say, "What was I like as a child?" You were perfect, I guess. I don't know. She she was just kind of. I can't. Remember. I asked you, did she read? The, she read this thing in or what? Not exactly. What was that? I mean, she either read it she, or no, she didn't. She read didn't it, read it. No, she, she didn't read it. But what it was, was only for? published officially. Two days ago. No, but I mean, you're the writer, so okay. I assume yeah. you have it a okay. little bit earlier. So, so you not, you shy I'm away from give, giving it to her? Yeah, I'm a little nervous, but but she's she's gonna like it. She uh, when I wrote my f first novel, yeah, uh, I gave my mother the galleys, like the day it was too late to make any changes, yeah, and. It was a novel, and she said, change the name Sugar. I don't want to be related to anybody named Sugar. And I said, Mom, it's a novel. novel and she goes, yeah. uh-huh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but just change it anyway. And I did, and then she asked me to put the name of her hairdresser. Did in. you? I did, because why not? Why not? Exactly. I would have done it. Yeah. Now, uh, by the way, you, you brought ukuleles. I assume people at home have noticed this. And you have actually not only some expertise, but have been playing the ukulele. What is, it, what is a ukulele player called, by the way? Is there a name for that? Ukulele. Ukulist? Um, an extreme like amateur. Okay, yeah. well, fine. <laughs> but you told me today that you've actually been playing for decades. Is that yes, not that's true? true. Yeah. When we, did had that start? we had forgotten. We had forgotten. We started like in the early 60s. 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 Yeah. We yeah. told Bobby Zimmerman to go nasal. We were big time. He's the one from Minnesota. Oh, yeah. That guy? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, Joan yeah, Baez. Joan Baez. The whole scene. You started playing in the 60s. Yeah, early 60s. But the first time you ever worked together was on the Atlanta Magazine thing in the 70s. Okay, math is in our thing. It's not. Yes. Plus all those drugs we were doing back then I in the know. 60s, we forgot. <laughs> Our chronology is all messed up. I, I got, so I, I assume you, I you brought them. I was a lot of sweet and low. You were? Yeah. <laughs> I hated that, the aftertaste. Oh Did you hate the I aftertaste? I the aftertaste. You just yeah. pop them in right out of the packet. Me, so do you want, can you play some or is that? We'd love to. You would? Yes, absolutely. What selection are you going to play, actually? Gonna, well, we, 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 we um, rewrite public domain songs, so we're going to sing a short song called Park, Park, Park Your Car. Yes. On your mark, get set, <laughs> go. Park, park, park your car, kind of near the curb. Ay, 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 just bumped into her. I should, mm -hmm. It's okay to laugh at that, right? Yeah. I wasn't and laughing I, at your play. Yeah, yeah. The play. You were laughing at her. It was really <laughs> yeah, but he's not yeah. laughing, though, yeah. if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, to, you know, when I read this, I don't know if this is everybody, but I, I, the people with whom I've only spoken to a few people who've actually read it so far, because you may have heard it was just published yeah. a few days ago. Don't tell this my is, mother. This is my mother. I mean, it, it is. It, it, is yet that reaction? Well, and no, I felt I, the same way when you wrote your book a couple yeah. of years ago about dying and stuff. Does everybody I think have there are two mothers. Yeah. I think there's that mother, and then there are the mothers that are completely different. You know, every once in a while you oh, meet a mother. Yeah. But, 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 but most people have our mother. It's like, did you ever see the, hear the Nichols and May um, sketch mother? Do you know that I one? No, I don't know it. Where, where I don't know it. Well, they were Woodstock, too, with you, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, oh, I mean, this is, I'm going to anyway. do something I'm really going to regret, I know, because to tell a story you think is funny about your mother to two people, like, can I do it without? Okay. And okay. you'll laugh even we'll, if you We'll don't. laugh. Okay, because, yeah. by the way, your mother's from Philadelphia, my mother's from Philadelphia. Yeah. So in her later years, she was living on Rittenhouse Square, you know, Rittenhouse of Square, course. you know, sort of a senior kind of thing. Lived. And she, oh, really? 
Okay, so she's living there, and she tells me she's at a cocktail party. I lived in, in Boston at that time, of fellow octogenarians. And they're going around. There are five of them, she tells me. She calls me on the phone. She says, the other four are all complaining about their grown children. You know, this one says the, the kids don't come to visit me. They don't bring the grandchildren. They don't send me a check. And my mother said when it came her turn, she was last in the little circle. She said to her friends, Thank God I never had children. What is it? Wow. Oh, that's great. Wow. Thank you for that. That's, that's really that's good. Sort of yeah, sad. that's really good. Did your mother play bridge in Philadelphia? She did play bridge. Yeah. Is it possible she played? She, she actually was a little older. Because there. I was thinking of complaining, because my mother told me that when she played bridge, half of the ladies complained. No, half the ladies said they wished they'd brought a sweater, and the other said they were glad they brought a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> are, you got, are, are you working on something else now, or is this... Uh, it we have another book coming out. Yeah. On what kind of thing? Uh, it's on Valentine's Day. It's sort of the, the same size, and it's about relationship advice. Of something which we, we know none. nothing about. And yeah. It's called yeah. You Can Only Yell at Me for One Thing at a Time. I love yeah. that. You guys are fabulous. The book is fabulous. Your playing is... Fine. Yeah. Nice to see you, nice Patricia. See Thank you. you so much, Ross. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. Uh, the book again is, and you should really get it, is Laugh Out Loud. Why don't you write my eulogy now so I can correct it? A mother's suggestion. 